Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Good Morning Soul. And today, I wanted to do another first watch, my initial thoughts, whatever the fuck this is. Uh, if you haven't seen my Spider-Man uh, Into the Spider-Verse first thoughts, I basically wanted to start, since I don't review comic book movies, I don't review... Uh, a good number of things, Star Wars movies, because I want to make bigger videos about them someday. Um, I, I like to at least get my initial thoughts down when I first see these things. So this is my new way of doing that. And my newest, <laughs> the film that I'm going to be doing that for today, is Aquaman. A, a character who is, in all honesty, kind of a fucking meme to me. I remember multiple times where, like, I would just use Aquaman, just his existence for the butt of a joke. That's, that's how, that's why I think of the character of Aquaman, even though I haven't, I haven't read many comics, but I sure as hell have not read an Aquaman comic. So, then, obviously, I saw Justice League, I saw this one in action, I didn't mind him, you know, Justice League was a very... Uh, standard superhero movie so he didn't really have a whole lot of room to grow but here he is in his own movie and I'm going to do a quick non-spoilery review which is it was a lot better than I thought which isn't to say much I, I didn't go into this thinking it was gonna be bad like I thought hey they might be able to pull it off you know um, Wonder Woman worked I really liked Wonder Woman it's still a better movie than this even though there is many problems with that movie, but whereas in Wonder Woman, they're all kind of towards the end of the film, this film, it is just sprinkled with uh, shit all over this otherwise standard, pretty good superhero film. And it's, it's weird. It's like when Wonder Woman came out, it was being labeled as the good Justice League DC film. And people are acting like that never happened because all of a sudden it's like oh Aquaman the first DC good movie but it's like okay but Wonder Woman and a lot of people still like Justice League I think I gave Justice League like a 6 out of 10 which ironically is the score that I'm going to give this one for people who don't want to wait till the end of the spoilers but yeah Justice League worked for what it was and then this film took the one character that I'm sure plenty of people liked because of uh, his attractive nature, you could say. Uh, I, I've heard too many, too many girls uh, fl flaunt over this guy, swooning about Jason Momoa. You could hear it in the theater, just ooh, like right when he walks in, his shirt is off. The first time you see him. Anyway, I had like two or three points I was going to make, but I kept rambling. Anyway, so, this movie is about Jason Momoa, who is a half-breed, I'm just going to go into spoiler, spoilers now, he is a half-breed between a human and, like, an Atlantean. Atlantean are, like, sentient, ancient humans that got swallowed under the water, and then they became super creatures, and you don't really know how far they extend, because technically two-thirds of the planet are water, so technically the Atlanteans could be bigger in number than human race and we still don't know about it because that's how fucking big the ocean is but at the same time they're saying hey we can take over the human world and it's like they're acting as if like the smaller of the two worlds so yeah it's perfectly believable that atlanteans are like this second whole some of them are even like mer people and fish creature like half breeds down the line it's totally believable that that would exist uh, within this universe and it like kind of amps up like how big of a deal this is where Aquaman who by the way his mom has to leave them and he assumes she gets executed and then he gets trained by Willem Dafoe Willem Dafoe's in this movie he's kind of hilarious as he's in these underwater scenes trying to trying to get his acting on having that straight face and there's just this ugly ass water world around him I'm sorry but my Favorite parts of this film are the ones that don't take place underwater. 
everything that was like in Atlanta, like I know some people with the Thor movies, they didn't like the Asgard shit because that was like all fantasy. And that's how I felt with this film. It was just so much 100% CGI and then like a human's face swimming somewhere in the middle of that. And some of it looked cool and I liked uh, certain parts of it. Like they had lots of explosions underwater, which by the way, for a person who is the saying he's the, we cut from Aquaman being told he's like a hero. He's better than a king. And then his entrance, and he's like, no, it's time for you to save the day and help the people. But his fucking entrance murders more people than this guy probably ever killed. That was crazy. That didn't make any sense. Fucking Aquaman committing mass genocide. We're just supposed to be like, yeah, you get, you got it, man. Um, so yeah, I, I, I didn't like the shit that was all underwater, but thankfully the best parts i will say i like that one fiery arena water level uh that was actually a pretty good fight which that's what i was gonna say james wan the fucking director of insidious made a dc film that i care about the action for that is fucking crazy which by the way james wan taking up this very different role it's crazy how the guy from saw goes to directing these a budget uh, action superhero films. What a what an evolution that took. But yeah, there was that big fiery water scene, which finally was kind of the turning point where I was like starting to like Jason Momoa's character because I didn't like him for like the first third of this film, I'd say, because he was like a very Superman s Kirito. I don't fucking get defeated by anything he was kind of like thor when thor was a cocky asshole and he didn't really grow from that until he was beat up and he had to you know build himself back up that's kind of when it got more of him talking to this romantic interest character or whatever anyway which good evolution but then there's this another beautiful action scene in italy italy was probably my favorite part of this film I like how we had time for like to get a like road trip vibe like 20 30 minutes there with Aquaman and this girl going from these really it's like a little couples retreat thing that they go on it's great um, in Italy that is probably the best part of this entire film like there's this one scene where his female sidekick character Mara was it she because she can control, she's a waterbender basically. So they're in this wine shop and she uh, bursts all these bottles of wines and turns them into needles that she then hits an opponent with. And it is probably visually my, the most stunning part of this film. It was like kind of like a like jaw dropping moment that took place there. That was a great moment. And the ending battle with him and his brother that was actually a great action scene and it's between two guys with very basic weapons um, and they're able to even though have they have these godly powers they kind of tone it down and make it a lot more comprehensive than what a lot of what go was going on around them so that was really great which by the way let's talk about the villain the fucking insidious dad um, look at him being this big getting this huge role or whatever uh, he was, I, he was kind of a mixed bag for me because I think his motive was there. Uh, his acting, none, none of all the acting in this movie was kind of right on, right on the money for what they needed to do. And there was no like breakout performances. Um, the only one that wasn't that great for me was the, uh, B list, uh, villain, the, uh, the mantis was his name. Uh, didn't love him. Every other performance, though, I thought was pretty good. Including the villain who really, you, you understood him. Which I think is the most important thing for a villain, is you understand them. I don't need to be, like, pandered to every time. Like, oh, he needs a motive, I need to. His, his way of thinking can be, like, ad adaptable and adoptive in this whole different point of view. 
No, I just need to like know what's going on in your head, dude. That's that's all that matters with villains. They don't need to be a good guy in an alternate dimension. Right? I don't need anti-villains. I just need to understand the villain. And that's what I got from this guy. And you understood why he just hated uh, Aquaman's character and why he started this war because he's trying to be the good king that he feels he is entitled. He's living up to his responsibilities. And Jason Momoa is a guy who is doing the exact opposite. He doesn't want to be king. He's just here, which it, it's kind of like his brother's doing it for selfish reasons or reasons that he, might not be selfish to him, but he is becoming something for the sake of doing it for himself and showing up. Where as Jason Momoa is kind of, he actually wants to protect the people. He feels that he has to do this for others. It's a very interesting dynamic. Um, their mom is like kind of like the catalyst for everything. I like that idea. Um, other than that, I don't love the romance between uh, Aquaman and his Mara. Um, they they have like really kind of cheesy comic book movie dialogue, uh, and they didn't really seem to have a lot of quiet moments where you like kind of understand why they're like. It's kind of just like flirting turned into this big epic kiss towards the end. And there's no moment where I was like, okay, this is why these two love each other. So it kind of felt like it was just missing a scene or two, which is crazy because you're in the most beautiful scenery where we go from sandy underground layers. We go to this crazy uh, Bermuda Triangle turned into plummeting. Uh, that, that whole scene, by the way, with the boat, another great action scene. I don't like the monsters they used for that scene because they looked awful. Other than that, though, I like the whole idea with the flare, and I love all of that. I love all of that. I like that he met his mom towards the end. What I don't understand, though, and I like how he, beca he gets the trident, he defeats him. It all makes sense. It doesn't feel cheap the way he got it. It kind of feels like he did what he needed to. He was blessed by this great creature that he can now command. I understand all that some mystic trident thing. That's all well and good. What I don't understand is why his fucking female sidekick Mara can't just become king. Because they're treating this thing, oh, it's about royal blood. Okay, she's got royal blood. Um, obviously, it's because he's a man. That's, that's it. But I just don't understand, like, how this society, it, like, where they draw the line is, like, with a man. But this random half-human who doesn't understand the culture, who gets booed to hell in the public light, so nobody wants him to be king, that guy can become king after crossing all of those hurdles. But this random woman can't, even though she's overqualified, and that's, that's, that's too hard to grasp. That's like, that's where we can't have any jumps or leaps in faith. And I think I was told that they said something about that in the movie and they just brushed it off. What the, like, what? What? I don't, I, I just don't understand. I really don't. Especially when she could have taken him out like from within the system if she's this fucking good at her job. Like she can have, she can get this guy to the magical trident, but she can't, like, stab her husband in the back while he isn't looking. Okay. Anyway, so that's 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 a lot of the main points. There was Mantis, who I thought had a good backstory, but again, I didn't love the performance from the guy. Um, it wasn't bad or anything. It was just kind of subpar. And. Like the after credit scene with him, it just didn't feel like this was a character I would want to be like the main bad guy for the sequel, you know? It just kind of felt like he was like a mercenary and nothing more. A d mercenary with a deep personal background, but you get it. And the, the resolution to the film uh, was very fast, but this movie was fucking long. This was a long ass movie. I think that's probably one of my main complaints about it is 
when I a, a large part of when I think of how much I enjoy film, it's like how likely if I just could pick any movie in the world, would I just pick Aquaman? And then when I think about that, I would have to dedicate however fucking many minutes are in this film to watch Aquaman. And that's just a huge commitment for a movie that I know isn't fantastic by any means. So I think that's a huge reason why I wouldn't want to watch this film again and why its length is like a huge problem with it. They do do a lot in that, but a lot of the scenes, like the underwater scenes, just look terrible to me. Um, everything else, though, I can take. I can take the Jason Momoa costume at the end. I can take him as uh, the new, like this new embodiment of what Aquaman can be, which is very far from what I picture. I, I picture Mermaid Man when I think of Aquaman, not fucking Jason Momoa, the Samoan monster anyway i think that's pretty much it uh for what i'm giving the rating it's a six out of ten and it's actually a pretty strong six out of ten like i know when i think of like justice league in this film i think that those two films show like the giant open gaps a film can be in from a high six out of ten to a low six out of ten because each rating, because if you watch like 10,000 movies, right, and each of them are in those scores, there is a thousand levels of beats and quality that are between some of those numbers, right? I know that's a weird, I, that's why some people do percentages. If I, if I could give this film a percentage, it would be like 65, 67, 68, you know? Eh, maybe not. Maybe like a strong 65. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, that's what I thought of fucking Aquaman. It is a it is a pretty good superhero film. Not as good as Wonder Woman, but certainly better than the majority of what these films are going to be. And this universe, by the way, is crumbling apart even as they're coming out. I don't feel like... It's weird. The Marvel films are like different shades to what is a comprehensive universe and when the avengers come it all kind of fits together and makes sense this film no, none of these films feel like they're a part of the same universe even after i've seen justice league i feel like this film isn't even has anything to do with that it's weird i don't i don't think of batman v superman i don't think of suicide squad when i think of this film i think they're a little bit different but Anyway, that's what I thought of Aquaman, and we'll we'll see where this DCEU goes, because I really don't even know anymore. <sighs> Apart, I mean, kind of hopes it, it just slowly cripples and dies, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you again for watching, and until next time, with that, I leave you.